going to show you guys actually first thing the difference between the scissors and the knife because it kind of goes a little bit in parallel uh, with the difference between the pen tool and the pencil tool. That means one, like the, actually the scissors is very, very precise and you have to be mindful of how many clicks you do. You remember when you did the ears of the tiger, how important it was to do, you know, click, click, and then click, click, and we'll do it again. So you had two clicks, one per each shape. Uh, and then uh, the knife tool instead is a lot more free form. So the pen tool is very precise, the pencil tool is very free form. Let's actually look in the layers, see where we are. We're going to create a new layer to play with. I'm going to actually create a shape right now. I'm going to create a, um, a, a simple ellipse. I don't want you to necessarily do it, I just want you to watch because it's something that you will definitely use. Uh, but for now, I just want you to understand the, the concepts. So if I wanted, I'm going to actually get this ellipse to be a certain color. If I wanted to use the scissors on this and cut it, and actually before I cut it, let me actually create a um, shape, a, a copy of it. So on one side we'll do the scissor, on the other side we'll do the knife. So I'm going to use, cut this one, I'm going to go with my scissor, and I told you, you basically click, and you click. You click twice <coughs> only, in the two points you want to make the separation, and there, there we are, we now have two shapes. How are these shapes? They're, they're what I would call open paths. In fact, if you go in outline mode, it is Apple Y, by the way, you do see that these guys are open. This one is closed, right? I'm going to go back in, with Apple Y into preview mode. Now I'm going to do a cut through the knife tool. The knife tool, instead of clicking and clicking, you need to click and drag. And I'm going to create an odd shape. And then I, you need to close that path you just created. And now I have two separate objects. I did create a cut, but the two objects this time are actually closed paths. So the scissors tool is incredibly precise. You know exactly where you're cutting, right? Versus the knife tool is much more free form. You just, you know, click and drag, close the loop, and that's what it ends up with. Open path for the scissor, closed paths for the knife. Any questions? Pretty straightforward. Fantastic. Let's go into, actually, uh, Apple Y again. Go back to this. So this is the, the pencil tool. And by the way, if you double click on the pencil tool, you'll have variables that we'll go into in a minute. But for now, let's just take the default and start creating a shape. Let's say I need to trace this um, image. And by the way, we'll go today into when you import an image, an illustrator, how can you import it, by the way. We'll definitely get into there. But if I want to create a, a path in here, and I'm going to go this time into the drawing layers. In, your, in this file that I prepared, that by the way, it's called Exercise 4 Pencil Tool. You have two layers. I created the third one just to give you the demo of the scissors and the knife. But you have two layers, the skull that is the image, and then the drawing layer is where you can draw. So I'm going to start clicking and dragging. And I'm basically going really free form. I actually right now have a mouse. I always love to do this in a um, tablet format. But let's say that I'm going to just, for now, go in to create this half. I'm going to create half of this um, drawing because then I'm going to flip it and make a copy of it. So I'm going to mirror it so that uh, I, don't, I have to do only half of the work. Obviously, if I want to color in that, I just add the color and life is good. Now I'm actually going to remove the color for the moment to show you how many paths, uh, how many, sorry, anchor points are showing into this path. Quite a few, right? So I'm going to actually grab this path and move it aside for the sake of doing another one right after. I'm going to double click on the pencil tool and let look, uh, let's look at the settings. Here it talks about fidelity, and this one is smoothness. What are these two? These are your two most important settings. The fidelity is how loyal is this going to be? Is the, the, the path going to be to your tracing with the mouse? So, so how close is it going to be? Versus the smoothness has to do with the curviness. You know, how, much, how if you have a tight curve or a wide curve, this smoothness really matters. Yes. You double click on the tool. In Illustrator, I want you to understand that if you double click on the tool, it will give you settings versus right here, you don't you double click, nothing happens, right? If you are on a shape. 
Why? Because on the shapes, you actually need to simply click on the canvas and now it gives you settings. So when you're on a tool, you double click and it gives you a settings versus when you are on a shape, on a drawing object, when you click on here, it will give you, will prompt you to input precisely the shape in this case of the ellipse. If I wanted to actually uh, have it free form, instead of double clicking, I just click and drag, right? Okay, so let's go into here and change the fidelity to be, for example, double and see what happens. We're at five, and I'm going to say okay. And now I'm going to go in and do the same thing I did a minute ago and see what's the difference. What is going to change is actually also these settings will allow you to also change how many anchor points gets generated. So if I, if I click on these two... I'm actually comparing them. You see that it has a little bit less anchor points, probably half. In fact, we could count them. Quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci, uno, due, tre, quattro, quindi, sei, sette, diciotto, eighteen. Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci. Twenty-seven. So quite a bit more. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that whatever you do, I'm going to save actually this one. Whatever you do, be really uh, understanding of the fact that this, in fact, let's do now, let's change the smoothness. Let's make the smoothness like 30% and see what happens. Whatever you do it will affect how many anchor points you have as well as how loyal this shape is to you tracing. To your, to your basically, uh, wow, look at this. The smoothness definitely took down the amount of anchor points. That means took down also how uh, loyal you are to, that, to, that, um, uh, to, to your tracing. Bottom line is, if you go into these two settings and increase them, you'll have less precision in a way, so less ability to follow a certain outline, but at the same token, you'll have less anchor points. It sometimes is a great advantage because there will be times in which you actually need to have very little anchor points because if there are any changes to be made, it will allow you to tweak only, you know, in this case, 10 anchor points instead of 28. That makes a big difference. Now, so this is the pencil tool, and what I want to show you is actually the pen tool pretty quick. So I'm going to go right now into the next exercise that is called the um, pen tool exercise. So if you open the pen tool right now, what I'll show you is, that I did here is I created a series of uh, curves for you. So I want you to learn the pen tool by first creating simple curves. Eventually you will go in and if I do Apple zero, you see the entire document, you will be tracing actually the parrot so that you will be able to create the parrot. So let me really quickly, before we go anywhere else, introduce the pen tool. Just, you know, what it is, what does it do. I'm going to create a new document so I don't have anything to follow. This is the pen tool. P is the shortcut. And what you simply do is you click, 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 and click to create straight, you know, uh, lines. Or, and by the way, you can <coughs> click and drag here and create curve lines. You can create closed paths, or you can create open paths. And let's say you got out of your path and you realize you actually needed to continue it. If you go back on the pen tool and you click on the very last point, you'll, be, you'll see that right next to your pen tool, you see a little uh, oblique bar. And that means you're connecting to that point if you click. So if I click and then continue my path, there we are. Now I have a closed path that has a fill, so it, uh, it hides what is behind it. Keep in mind that anchor points are really important to be, as I said, the minimum they can be. Because if I go to a client and he says, you know, I don't like this shape. I want you to change it to be something else. Then you have to go with your white arrow and go in and change each anchor point to match what the clients want. So the minimum amount of anchor points is really smart simply because it allows you to, do, to save a lot of time when you do your tweaks. Right underneath the pen tool right here, you have various options. One is to add an anchor, one is to delete an anchor, one is to go and create actually a sharp point right there. So in a way what sharp points means is you're losing your handles. Because keep in mind that all these objects, all these paths, if I click with the white arrow, you can see here that each of these anchors have these handles that allow me to control what I call the belly of that curve. Control the, you know, how that curve 
performs. So keep in mind that these anchors are really, really important as well as the handles are really, really important. Any questions so far?